In this video, we're going to continue discussing random variables and probability distributions. Specifically, we're going to be talking about probability distributions for continuous random variables. Consider the random variable x equals the weight in pounds of a full-term newborn child. What type of a variable is this? Is it discrete or is it continuous? continuous. Now suppose the weight is reported to the nearest pound. So the following probability histogram displays the distribution of the weights. The area of the rectangle centered over seven pounds represents the probability that that weight is between or equal to 6.5 or 7.5 pounds. Well, what is the sum of the areas of all of the rectangles? it should be one. So now suppose that the weight is reported to the nearest 0.1 pound. So this would be the probability histogram. Notice that the rectangles are narrower and the histogram begins to have a smoother appearance. Now if the weight me is measured with greater and greater accuracy, the histogram approaches a smooth curve. Now in this particular histogram, the shaded area represents the probability between or equal to 6 and 8. This is an example of a density curve. As far as probability distributions for continuous variables, it's, spe it's specified by a curve called the density curve like we just saw. Now the function that describes this curve is denoted by f of x and is called the density function. The probability of observing a value in a particular interval is the area under the curve and above the given interval. Let's talk about some of the uh, properties of continuous probability distributions. So first, the curve cannot dip below the horizontal axis. So our f of x is going to need to be greater or equal to zero. And the total area under the density curve equals one. Let's look at an example. So we're going to let x denote the amount of gravel sold in tons during a randomly selected week at a particular sales fa facility. Now suppose the density curve has a weight, f of x, above the value x, where f of x equals two times the quantity one minus x, for when x is between or equal to 0 and 1, but it's 0 otherwise. Now, the density curve is shown in this figure. Notice that for any number larger than 1, our value is 0. So the question is, what is the probability that at most, a half a ton of gravel is sold during a randomly selected week? So we're looking for what is the probability that x is less than or equal to 1 half. So we're going to go to our 1 half and then shade backwards. The probability would be the shaded area under the curve and above the interval from 0 to 0 0.5. Now this area can be found by using the formula for the area of a trapezoid, which is 1 half times the quantity base 1 plus base 2 times the height, or base 1 plus base 2 times height divided by 2. Now an easier way to find this area would be to find the area of the triangle that's not shaded and subtract that from 1. Remember that the area formula of a triangle is area equals 1 half base times height. So here we'll take our 1 minus and then our area formula for our triangle. So 1 half our base, which is 0.5, times our height of 1. So again, here we have our base of 1 half and our height of 1. And that's going to give us a 0 0.75. Well, what is the probability that exactly 1 half ton of gravel is sold during a randomly selected week? So here, if we have the probability that x equals 1 half, we end up with just this line segment at the one half. 
So the probability would be the area under the curve and above 0 0.5. But how do we find the area of a line segment? You can't. So this probability is 0. Since the line segment has no area, the probability that exactly one half ton is sold equals zero. So let's talk about what the probability is that less than half a ton of gravel is sold during a randomly selected week. So notice that here we're just saying that x is less than one half. So we go ahead and we fill that in. Now the question is, does the probability change whether the one half is included or not included. Hmm. Now this is different than discrete probability distributions, where it does change the probability whether a value is included or not. Here, it doesn't matter. So our one minus our area of our triangle still applies. So we get 0 0.75. Let's take a look at another example. So we're going to suppose that x is a continuous random variable defined as the amount of time in minutes taken by a clerk to process a certain type of application form. Now suppose that x has a probability distribution with a density function such that f of x equals 0.5 when x is between 4 and 6, but it's 0 otherwise. So the graph of the density curve is going to look like this. Notice that we're between 4 and 6 here, and otherwise we're a 0. So our question becomes, what is the probability that it takes more than 5.5 minutes to process the application form? So we're going to go ahead and we're looking for x is greater than 5.5. So we'll get our 5.5 and, and shade forward to the 6. And we want to find the probability by calculating the area of the shaded region. Well, this is just a rectangle, so it's just base times height. So we'll take our 0.5 and multiply it by our 0.5 to get 0.25. When the density is constant over an interval, resulting in a horizontal density curve, the probability distribution is called a uniform distribution. Now, some density curves resemble the one below. Integral calculus is used to find the area under these curves. Don't worry, we're going to use tables with the values already calculated, and we can also use calculators or statistical software to find this area. So let's take a look. So the probability that a continuous random variable x lies between a lower limit a and an upper limit b is a cumulative area to the left of b minus the cumulative area to the left of A, as shown in our diagram below. So what does that look like a little bit better? So we're saying that the probability that X is between A and B is going to be the probability that X is less than B minus the probability that X is less than A. So again, in order to find this, we take the area of B and subtract the area of A from that, the probabilities, and that will give us our finalized answer. This will be very helpful later in this chapter.